We'd like to begin the program. Good evening, everybody. Very nice of you to be here. Bob Clements, man of the hour. Bobby, how are you? Good to see you. All of us MOBs, friend of Bob's. <laughs> We have to rent the convention center to get everybody in here who would like to be here tonight. This is a grand gathering for a grand man. We're going to uh, have the invocation here in just a moment, and we'll be hearing from some special friends, you all, all our special friends and Bob, but we'll have a few uh, give remarks after dinner, and uh, some special remarks, too, from certain other people, like me. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, if I could please call to the podium for the invocation, the Reverend Dr. Steve Turnbull. Reverend Turnbull, if you'd come forward, thank you very much, sir. Immediately after the invocation, we'll begin dinner after that upcoming program. Reverend. Thank you very much. Hey, Bob, thank you so much for the privilege of being here. We're all so glad to be here with you. And I, I know 10% of what makes you a remarkable man, maybe not even that, but uh, you can tell even more just by the people who are here tonight and who are gathered here with you. It takes a remarkable life to attract such a fine crowd as this. And it's a real privilege to be here with you today. I want to be real brief and just lead us in a prayer, but I do want to just share something with you. And it occurred to me in the last few days, thinking about your birthday, when I was coming up on a birthday, uh, it was not the same one you're coming up on right now, uh, or celebrating right now. Uh, there was a, a song that was popular, a country song by Tim McGraw called My Next 30 Years. And uh, he talks about always going to change the next 30 years. And I always thought that that was about turning 30. And my next 30 years, because I'm different. I didn't realize I have to wait till I'm 60 to find out how remarkable my next 30 years can be. Some of you saw the article, probably everybody here saw that article in the Pioneer Press recently. What a front cover story, full color picture, above the fold wasn't it even, I mean, most people have to do something really horrible to get up there. <laughs> so, uh, what an honor uh, to be here with you. But I know that uh, you are just dying for me to stop talking about you. You want, you want the glory to go to Jesus, so why don't we, why don't we bow our heads and pray. Nice to have you. into the program without acknowledging the presence of somebody who is so very special and has been in our collective lives over the years. 
I'm talking about one of the finest gentlemen, public servants, all around great guy that I've ever had the pleasure to know. Former governor, former congressman of the first district, Al Quee. Al? service you have uh, you've, <laughs> you've done us honor by having represented us both in Congress uh, if you were in the first district and especially as governor too thank you so much uh, I've told Al I'd like to circulate a petition tonight to get him to run for public office again. We, we need him uh, he's one of the few I think who have risen to the level of statesman I would say Elmer Anderson's another one Hubert Humphrey Mondale that's a very exclusive club Al thank you it's great to see you all right, Mary Nell, I'm going to call you up now, if I may, to come up here and introduce the Clemens clan, if you would. Okay, Mary Nell Clemens. There she is. Well, what a pleasure this is. You know, Psalm 127 says that children are a heritage from the Lord, and a man who has a quiver full is very blessed. And tonight, Bob's blessings abound. And so it's my pleasure to introduce the family. <laughs> so we'll start with his son, Bruce, and Jean, and his wife, Jean. And, of course, I told her, do not leave the room when I'm going to the <laughs> And so, oh, here she comes. comes. She is coming through the door <laughs> as we speak. <laughs> I'm sorry, I was taking the grand in the bathroom. <laughs> I'm coming and out so of the <laughs> There's Carla and Gary Bertram. <laughs> and thank God we have one that's close, and that's Carla and Gary. And then we'll go to the grandchildren. And there's Jesse Ballarud and his wife, <laughs> Melissa. And, and they came from Seattle, Washington. children are still in Seattle. They weren't ever able to travel today. And um, and then there's Levi. <laughs> Levi and his wife Rachel. And they live in Canby, Minnesota. And their children are Isaac. Isaac, will you wave? <laughs> and Aria. <laughs> And then there's our granddaughter, Rhea. Rhea Bolin and her children, Ruby and Ar and I. I'll get it right, he's Miles. He's told me several times his name is Miles. <laughs> and then from Anchorage, Alaska, we have Peter Clemens and his wife, Megan. parties before, you have seen Jerry Miller, who's walking around with the camera, and Jerry is a cousin from, um, originally from Watertown, South Dakota, and Jerry was a groomsman at our wedding, and so Jerry and his wife, Mena, are very special to us. And then another groomsman that was at our wedding is my nephew, Bill Arnold and his wife, Annette, and they live in Danbury, Wisconsin. And actually, it's his mother and daddy that are reason, the reason I'm here, and the reason I got to meet Bob. So they're kind of special. <laughs> You're kind of special, too. Indeed you are. We have some selected speakers here. I'd like to call to the microphone now, if I will. And, uh, Mary Nell, we thought maybe a couple minutes, two, you know, two minutes made to the podium, don't you? Uh, translate, maybe four, but we'll try to keep it within reason here. I'd like to call to the podium, to the microphone, Tom Radio. There's a word that's near and dear to my heart. Tom, would you please come forward? Radio, R-A-D-I-O. I know already you're a good guy, Tom. Thanks for coming up. Nice to meet you. Please tell everybody who you are. Tom. Tom Radio is, is uh, my name, and I have the privilege of knowing Bob through Bible Study Fellowship. 
and it's been just a uh, honor to have been asked to say a few words here. I will keep it very short. I don't have my 40 minute lecture, don't worry about it. <laughs> uh, many of you might be wondering as to Bob's secret to a long, productive life. I think I have figured it out. I have two clues that he gave me. First of all, it is knowing your way to the Mayo Clinic. <laughs> for about four years, every time I saw Bob, he was coming back from the Mayo Clinic with a new replacement part. I can't. <laughs> and I, you know, so most of Bob is not original. <laughs> but more important, and this is something that he shared with me one night after I selected a hymn, May the Mind of Christ be within me. He said, Tom, that's one of my favorite hymns, and every night I pray that God would give me the mind of Christ. And so Bob's mind has also been replaced. But most importantly, when he accepted Jesus as his Savior, his heart was made new. So all of Bob is new, and that's what keeps him so young and vibrant and moving ahead in his life. And I do have, also have the privilege of having Bob sit in the front row of my BSF class, and so as I struggle to present challenges and questions to the men as we study scripture, I basically use Bob as my go-to example. How can we be better husbands who love and cherish our wives? Bob Clinton. How can we be fathers who lead our children so that they lead godly lives? Bob Clemens. How can I be an honest, ethical, and very successful business person? Bob Clemens. How can I be a servant of Christ to the least to be in prison? Bob Clemens. Whenever I get stuck, I simply look to Bob as my example, as one of my heroes of the faith. I think for everybody in this room, you can look at Bob and say, he is one of my heroes. In him, I see Christ. Christ's love, Christ's mind, Christ's heart. So Bob, we love you. We give thanks to God for you every day. Next to the podium, please, Mr. Mike Badness. I hope it's not bad name. Badness, is that right? That's what we call it around here, Badness Heights. Oh, thank goodness for that. I guess right once in a while, don't I? Mike, here you are. Welcome to the podium, and uh, please tell us uh, all about you. What do I have to do with this, Benny? Just talk about it. <laughs> All right. Did everybody hear me? Yeah. I'm here to uh, just tell you about a personal experience that I've had with Bob over the last. Well, I've actually known Bob, or I met him personally when I was 15 years old. Uh, <clears throat> and we all know about his military background, the mission, and his people like Bob that are the reason that we're able to gather tonight and, and honor you. Great service. <clears throat> and, my, and, and over the years, our lives have touched and gone away and touched and gone away. And lo and behold, about 20 years ago, I happened to meet Bob in a coffee shop on Ray <laughs> And he and I had a little visit, and I uh, reached out to him. There was nothing spiritual about our conversation, but I just knew. So I reached out to him and I said, I think I've got a little hole in my life. So <clears throat> he invited me. He invited me to go on a journey with him. He probably regrets it now, but uh, at the time, he, uh, he invited me to attend some uh, CBMC Christian businessmen luncheons with him. And uh, <clears throat> And as time went on, we did workbooks together, we read books, and we did workbooks, and we had one-on-one -on -one, uh, for some years. And about 12 or 13 years ago, I uh, accepted Jesus as my Savior, and uh, 
ever since then we've been doing our, our lessons, following lessons, whatever you want. They're very beneficial to me. Then, seven or eight years ago, Bob invited me to attend a Monday night meeting of guys that read the Bible. I got my Rolex out and I started coming up with excuses. Bob, I'm way too busy. The most patient man that I've ever met in my life. He would just sit there and listen to me and he would shake his head like, yes, yeah, I hear you. And that was the end of the conversation. So this happened for about seven or eight years. And then a year ago, he caught me off guard. <laughs> I ran out of excuses. And he invited me to attend Bible Study Fellowship. It is truly something that uh, has changed my life. And I'll be forever thankful to Bob. And uh, I look forward to continuing our study and, uh, and giving it life application, studying the Bible. Thanks, Bob. Thank you very much, Mike, for those words. Now I'd like to call to the podium, please, uh, for the family, Pastor Levi Bolarud. Pastor, right here. Hello. Uh, as you heard in the introductions, I am one of Bob's grandchildren, one of many, many grandchildren that Bob has, and many great-grandchildren that he loves. So, I wanted to start with, with a quote, a quote by a man named William Sloan Coffin, that goes like this, the joy of God is a human being fully alive, and that joy, that being fully alive is something that Bob just exhibits so much. You know, looking back over my, my memories of, of Grandpa Bob, how many times he came up to visit us? 33? Is that what it is? It, I know he knows. I wasn't even close. 41 and 45. I way underestimated. Yes. That's right. That, that's a big part of it. Because, see, we were in Alaska. So this wasn't just jumping in the car and, you know, driving over to Wisconsin. This, this is a five and a half hour flight if you're lucky. All right, so 45 times Grandpa came and visited us in Alaska. Came to sporting events and confirmations and just a million amazing things. And what I remember with every single one of those trips is the smile. The smile and the joy that Grandpa Bob had. Always had. Just loving life, living life to the fullest and, and passing that on to us. No matter what we were doing, and I promise you, we were not always doing the best things. Sometimes we were a little out of control and running around and loud and crazy. I know it's hard to believe, but we were. And even with that, Grandpa Bob was smiling and laughing, usually sitting back on the couch watching us just happy, just enjoying that joy. A joy that he passed down to us. A joy that I hope to pass on to my children. That living life to the fullest. I can tell you, God is a very happy person with the life of Grandpa Bob. Thank you, Reverend. Beautiful words. Now we're just about to the... Uh the summit of the evening. Ladies and gentlemen, I've known Bob for about 20 years. And the real blessings in the world. I think you all can identify with that. We know what manner of man he is. And by the way, by extension, Mary and I too. My dear Mary shared with me a story the other day that I think is a striking, striking parallel to the work, that the many pieces of work, but one piece in particular that Bob kind of does. There's a story I was not aware of during the Nuremberg trials after World War II in Germany, when the Nazi criminals, the top echelon, were brought to trial, a Catholic priest and a Protestant minister were asked to come in and minister. He 
spiritual advisors and counselors to the likes of Herman Goering, General Keitel, all of those who were charged with crimes against humanity. Who, who, among anybody, at least at all the clergymen, want to deal with these people? These clergymen did. They did it willingly. They realized that no soul is beyond redemption, no matter how evil you might have been. What it means. So they did this. To me, they're heroes. And that's why I see Bob Clement as a hero, too. He goes in to the maximum security facility at Oak Park Heights, talks to people who have done some very bad things, but Bob is a forward look. He said, I'm not interested in what they did. I'm interested in what's in him. He ministers to their spiritual needs. Beautiful thing. <coughs> the inmates out there really, really love this. There's no question about it. So I've never met such a truly unique man. And one thing, these guys from World War II and gals, they never boast. They keep it all inside. They really don't talk about it. I can tell you this, those are chest thumpers who go around telling you that they were heroes in the war. They weren't there. The guys who really did it, who smelled the smoke and ate the fire, and were at the point of the spear, they're the ones who are really talk about it. Fortunately, we have books like this one that came out just a few years ago. This gives capsule summaries of some of the aviators who flew in World War II from Minnesota. Of course, our friend Bob Clemens is in here. Bob, I know you're not one to boast, so I'll, I'll, no, this is not boasting. This is just a couple of paragraphs from the recollection that Bob Clemens submitted for this book about his wartime flying experiences over Nazi-occupied Europe. He flew his last mission as a very, very young navigator. He started at the age of 19. Uh, his war was over, he said, uh, after the last mission, September 12, 44. My war in the air was now over. I had participated in 60 missions, 10 of which were called back. And of the 400 crew members who arrived with me in Italy in June of 1944, only 150 survived. I returned home to civilian life in October of 1945. One very lucky and thankful man. How I survived the years between my ages of 18 and 21, where others did not survive. I'll leave that one to God. How beautiful, from the heart. This guy, I think he's a wonderful combination of fortitude and gratitude. What a sweet man. Ladies and gentlemen, our birthday boy, Bob Clemens. <laughs> to each and every one of you for coming this evening. I can tell you that each one of you have had an impact in my life, a very positive one. You know, uh, when you get to be 90, you look back and you wonder, uh, what was life really like? And as you really study it, you find it was great. And it seems to get better every day. You know, it's, uh, I, I'm just amazed at how nice people are to an old pooper like me. <laughs> and so I'm indebted to each one of you for coming. I'm indebted to my queen, Mary Nell. By the way, I just changed her name. I changed her rank. She was a general, but she didn't like that very well. So I changed it to queen. <laughs> but of course, the one that's had the greatest impact in my life is Jesus Christ. He's remade my life, and he had a lot of patience with me. He put up with me till age 51 before I changed my life and decided I would follow him. And when people ask me, what religion are you and what church do you go to? I say, that doesn't matter much. I'm a follower of Jesus Christ. That's what's important. And I appreciate the support I've gotten from so many people. And uh, of course, the support of the church I go to. Uh, 
I've gone to that church since 1930. My mother and I joined that church when I was six years old. And uh, I treasured every year there. But thanks to each one of you for coming. I appreciate it very much. And I hope that uh, you have had a blessing tonight that uh, will linger in your hearts, not because of me, but because of Jesus and all the friends that are here. Thank you very, very much. And thank you, Queen, for being <laughs> such a great partner. for the evening? <laughs> Can we linger for a little bit? Okay, we'll do that. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you so much for coming to salute <laughs> the most special person I think we'll ever know. Thank you so much. Good evening.